In this video, I wanna talk about what JSON path is and how to use it. Now, okay, what's JSON path? Well, if you come over to your API calls, so this is how you would get external data into your app, maybe from Twitter or from the Star Wars API that we're gonna get it from here, and we add in an API call and if you go over here, oh, let's give it, let's say Star Wars characters. And we need a URL. So let's just grab our swappy API. So that's slash API. Let's go slash people. Okay, so there's, so there we've got our endpoint. We're getting some stuff. So we're going to add this call. Okay, great. So let's go into here and let's go into our response and test. And you can see right here, define JSON paths. Now, JSON path is a query language. Now, you might be thinking, oh wait, so do I have to like learn a whole nother language? No, 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 no. It's a query language, it's not a programming language. So it has a very small defined use, and that is when you've got some data, namely JSON, normally you don't want all of the data. So when we call our Star Wars API, let's call it here, we get a bunch of stuff. So you can see here, count, that probably means like, you know, the count of how many things are in here. And these are, we're looking at people. So it's like 82 people from Star Wars, right? And you probably don't want all of this. So you could think about if you're calling a server to get products or users or something like that. Normally, you don't want all of it. You just want a subset of it. So like, um, like only the products in some sort of category, right? And one of the ways to filter down through that is by adding JSON paths. So JSON path is just a small query language that allows you to filter down through this. And by learning just a few expressions, you'll be able to do most things you're trying to do. Now, one of the cool things about Flutterflow is that we've got this interface down here where we can test all of our JSON paths. So let's just like work with this and learn it in real time here. So let's add a JSON path in here. And let's say we want to grab, so well, let's, let's, let's look at the structure of this data we're getting from our Star Wars API. So we've got, we've just got this, this top level information and then we've got this results stuff right here, okay? And then in here, it looks like we've got an array of objects and we've got each of these objects is a character. So we've got Luke Skywalker, C-3PO, and then you can imagine as we go through this list. Okay, so let's define a path and we're just gonna, going to add a path, a custom path in right here. And we'll add it in later, but let's just test here to kind of get our first go at JSON path. Okay, so right now we are going to define a path and this in real time is going to filter our data that we got back, this JSON right here, and we're gonna filter it through here. Now, every query starts with this dollar sign, okay? That's just the root element of our JSON object. So if we just, do nothing here, it can't be empty, and we're just saying, hey, the root element, which is our object. Cool, the next thing we can do is we can just grab any one of these properties. So maybe we want count, the first thing. Well, there's two sort of main ways to do that. First, we can use dot notation, and that's exactly what it sounds like, and I go dot, and then count. And then we can see, we get the value from uh, we give the key right here and we get the value back from it. And of course you can do this to anything. Next right there and we get our next one, our next page. So these results are paginated so we can see the next results here. So that's cool. The other way we can do it is we can put it inside parentheses right here. So we put it in parentheses and then we need to put this in quotes right here. And it can be single or double, just wanna be consistent. Okay, so that's cool, but let's traverse our tree. That is like go down into some of these nested data structures down here. So let's jump into our results right here and we're gonna do our dot notation because it's just easier. Results. And so then we, here we get our results. And so just notice how this is structured and what we're getting out of here. So we have our root element. Then we're saying 
dot, using dot notation, to go into our property results. And what should the results return? This array of objects. There's one object, remember we saw all this before. And the end of that object is right here. And so there's another object, right? And what do we have? We've got our array of objects. And there's the end of our first object. So we're just we're just returning. Let's scroll down here. We're just returning the value of this results property. Okay, cool. So then if if we want to pick one of these things out of here, we can just treat this like an array if you're familiar with that, or a list is sometimes what they're called. So here we're gonna open our brackets right here. And let's say we want uh, the third one. Let's see what our third one is here, C3PO, and then we've got R2D2, okay. And we can just add in, it's zero index, that's when you start counting at zero, and so that's two right there, and then we get our R2D2 right there. Yep, now maybe we want both of our droids in here. So what we can do is we can actually get multiple ones of these by just separating what we want by a comma. So our C3PO here is our second item, so that would be one because it's zero index. So we can go one comma, and then we are returned an array. Notice that it puts them into an array of objects. So we've got our C3PO, and then we've got our R2D2. Okay, cool. But to be honest, a lot of times what we're doing is we're gonna wanna grab a bunch of stuff, right? We're probably not gonna be grabbing just like one individual thing that we can like pinpoint, right? And there's a great way to do that. And that has to do with these two dots. Let's get rid of these right here. And if we put two dots in, and then we add what we want, it's gonna do a recursive search. So it's gonna like query our whole data structure, our whole JSON object, and it's gonna look for whatever key we put in here. So maybe we want a list of all of the names in our JSON object right here. So we can just do dot dot as a, as a recursive search and just put in whatever key it is, name. And if we scroll up, we can see we get all of our names. And once again, we returned an array of whatever query we have. Now, notice what's pretty cool about this is that this traverses down through our whole nested data structure because we're starting off right here at our root. And then we're saying, hey, recursively search, that is search through the whole data structure for the property name and then return to me all the names. So this is, both very powerful and potentially dangerous, right? Why would it be dangerous? Well, let's say in our data structure we can have here, and notice we can edit this, which is very cool. Um, and so if we come in here and we're in the top level of our JSON object, and if I put a name in here, and I put name property, and I say blurg, and a comma, notice we get that back from our query too but it's on a different level of the tree. So on the top level, we've got a name, but then inside this array of objects, inside a results property, we've got these names right here. So just be aware of the power of this recursive search. Now, the last thing we're gonna look at here before we test this in our actual app is we're gonna look at filters. Now, this is a very powerful thing you can do with JSON Path, and that's if you wanna check for some conditions, right? So let me show you how this works. So let's go into our results. So let's go dot results. And so now we've got an array of objects. And to filter through these, we're going to do bracket question mark. And that indicates that this is a filter. And then we're going to have an expression that's just going to be inside some parentheses. Now we're just going to close this off. And then we just gotta put our parentheses in here. Okay, so now we've got this array of objects and we wanna check a condition, right? We wanna check if this character is female. Now, what this filter is gonna do is it's gonna go through each object in our array, in our list, and we're gonna check the condition. Okay, so how do we reference each item? Because first, we're, it's, gonna, it's gonna go through this 
Luke Skywalker object, right? And then this C-3PO object the second time around, right? So it's just looping through this information. Well, you reference the item with the at symbol, at. And the great thing about this is that now that we've got reference to it, we can just refer to any key in here. So we're gonna say dot gender. And of course that it is true for everything because it has each of these has a gender. That's why it's showing up right now. It's like, hey, check for the condition wherever this is true. Namely, there's a key property called gender and all of them have it. But we don't want that. We want where gender equals, and notice that's double equals, not single, not triple, because uh, not single, we're not assigning uh, a variable value, we're checking for equality, where gender equals female. And there we've got it, right now here. So we've got Princess Leia and Beru, whoever that is, I don't know who that is, but apparently it's a female. So we have two females in here, and we filtered through. So we can also use other common operators like less than or greater than. Now, we are gonna have to use a different API right here because if you can see, to use less than or greater than, we're gonna wanna be comparing numbers. Right here, these numbers come in as strings. And so to be able to use them here, you would have to do a little bit of extra programming and parse that. So instead, we're just gonna use a different API endpoint. So we're gonna come out of here. And we're just gonna do another API call. We're just gonna call this numbers. We're gonna use another common one called JSON placeholder, which is another uh, common sort of like test API that people use. And so we're gonna take response and text. We're gonna come down here, test our call. And you can just say they're just sort of mock posts right here. So we're gonna go into custom and we're gonna put in the same thing we had before. So what we're gonna do is let's filter according to, and you can see here, these aren't in, in quotes. And so these are, Jason is recognizing them as integers. So we're gonna come in here and we're gonna say, open that up, question mark, at, and we're gonna be looking at the dot ID property. And let's just say like greater than, so you can see it just counts up. And so we're just gonna say, hey, greater than, let's say 50. And let's just close that up. And then we can see there now, we've got 51, 52, et cetera. So we filtered out those first 51 ID posts. All right, so let's set up some paths and actually use them in an app. Up here, we can add a JSON path and let's just add in one for names. Let's go lowercase names. And how would we get there? Well, let's just do dot dot name, I believe it is. And so we can come in here. Now we've got reference to names here and we can just test it to see if it's true. I've got my blur in there, so let's get rid of that. It doesn't matter because it's that, that was just coming from me and not the API call. Okay, so cool. So that's working, that's what we want, right? And maybe we also wanna add in like height, right? So then we're also gonna go height and let's just ch test that out to make sure that's working. Height, there we go, awesome, array of height an array of names. Cool, so let's save this. And then let's come into our app. We've already got a column here. And so how do we get these? Now, um, if you come over here, we've got a backend query and you see we've got these generate dynamic children. Okay, so first we're gonna come into our backend query and we are going to set it to an API call and our Star Wars character, that's what we called our API call, and we're gonna confirm it. Okay, awesome. Now we wanna generate dynamic children, right? Because we want a, a child widget for each one of our characters. Okay, cool. So our source here is our Star Wars character response, and we've got this nice indication here, from our column. So. That's just telling us, hey, you 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 set this API call on your column. We can see that right there, and this is what you're referencing, right? Okay, great. Now we get uh, response options, and we want our JSON body because we don't want to display those other things like our, our status code. And then we've got some available options, and see we've got our JSON paths. So we click our JSON paths, and now we can either 
add our own custom one right here. So that is to say, you can filter your data that's coming into your app, either right when it comes in, like we were doing before with API calls, or right here on uh, on in, in your in your in your UI. Okay, so we're gonna grab our path name of names right there and we are going to confirm it. Now, before we confirm this, we gotta set a variable name here, and I'll show you why in a second. So we're just gonna call this Star Wars Names. And let's, let's do a little camel case here just to make it a little more visible. Okay, so Star Wars Names, great. So we're gonna confirm this. This widget now will generate its children dynamically from the specified variable. Simply edit the first child in this column to set how every child should look. Okay, okay, great. Wait, did anything happen? Well, yes it did. It is generating dynamic children, but we don't have any children yet. We've just got a column without any child widgets. Okay, so let's just dump a text widget in here so we can see that. And right when we dump it in, we can see all of these widgets are populating okay great so we've got our column here let's just let's just make it make it nice and wide okay great so now we want to actually see our characters so we come into our text widget remember it's a child of our column and we want to set it from a variable our source is now notice here we've got a couple we got two different things to so not be confused and this is why we had to name it Remember we named that variable, star wars names. This is one of those item from our JSON, right? It's not from our column. This is referencing the backend query up here. We wanna reference those dynamic children we already set up. So we're grabbing that here. Okay, great. Now we see some available options and we have index in list or we want our path. Now the index would be like the number. So if you're making like a, a numbered list of characters, maybe, maybe then you would want that. But here we want our JSON path and we just want the root element of that returned array. Okay, confirm. And now we can see here our dollar sign, our just root right here. Now, of course, in this UI builder, we can't actually see API calls. So we're gonna have to run our app and we're gonna run it in test mode so that we get hot reloading. So let's test it, and this will take a minute, and so I'll see you in a minute. And there we go. We've got dynamically generated children from our API call. All right, so that's an introduction to JSON Path. Leave any questions below if you have any, and we'll see you in the next video.